What is college really going to cost you? And is it something your family can even afford? My name is Cindy Montgomery, and I'm the CEO of S. Montgomery Admissions Consulting, where I specialize in working with first-generation and minority applicants. And today, I want to break down financial aid for you. Now, we're gonna be doing a lot of videos on college financial aid, but I first wanted to talk about estimating your family's contribution, estimating how much college is going to cost for you. There are so many terms that I want to just kind of break down for you at the beginning. So first, we're gonna talk about what are the key terms, and then we're going to talk about what is college really going to cost you and how can you figure that out how can you estimate that and then i'm going to break down the difference between what a college costs and what a college costs to you and what things like net price mean and demonstrated need and meeting demonstrated need and you're probably like i don't know what you're saying but we're gonna go over it and then I'm going to talk to you lastly about how to build your college list with affordability in mind. Now, I think that college affordability is so important that when my families come to work with me, no matter what plan they're on, if they're on a comprehensive package with me, it includes funding with smart track college funding because i think it is really important that as i'm working with your student on determining their best uh, college fit their needs their wants their majors their likes their interests all the things and working with them on their essays someone is working with you on the finances um and working you know with you as the parent on what are the you know tax things that you can do that make college more affordable and how can you save and what about assets? Those are all questions that I'd love for you to talk to a qualified college financial planner about. Let's start with the terms. What are they? And I'm going to try to break them down slowly for you. The first is cost of attendance. And no, that's not just the cost or the tuition. Cost of attendance is the estimated annual cost of going to that school. Yes, it includes tuition, but it also includes books. Sometimes it includes travel costs that you know your student might have going back and forth uh, for Thanksgiving and winter break. Sometimes it includes personal expenses. Um, it might include a dining plan. It might include activities fees or health plan fees. There are so many little things that go into that, but the cost of attendance is the overall there are really not a lot of other hidden costs. This is the full cost of coming here for one year. It's important to note that cost of attendance isn't just the bill, right? You're not going to get a bill for travel expenses for Thanksgiving or some of those personal costs. So total cost of attendance includes what is billed directly to you from the school, like tuition and room and board, but also what is not billed to you, those indirect costs that you just want to factor in if your child is going to go to that school. Now, net price is that cost of attendance I just talked about, minus any scholarships, gift amounts, grants, all of that uh, free financial aid. So that's the total cost to your family, that net price cost. Expected family contribution is the total amount of money that your family is expected to pay based on your financial situation for the cost of college for one year. That may or may not be the same thing as the net price. Now, when I talked about aid, there's two different kinds of aid. There's need-based aid, which is based on your family's financial situation, and then there's merit aid. And merit aid is based on grades or extracurricular activities or maybe being part of a certain affinity group. So there's a lot of things that can go into merit aid. Sometimes it requires additional scholarship applications, and sometimes it's just automatic with the one college application. Now, I am going to break all these terms down and use them practically, but just a few more for you. Demonstrated need is the difference between that cost of attendance that I talked about and your family's expected family contribution. That is your demonstrated need. Now, like I said, the net price and the expected family contribution are not necessarily the same thing. But that demonstrated need, how much different where theoretically the institution should come in or financial aid should come in is the difference between all of the money that you'd have to pay to send uh, your teen to that school for a year and 
what your family is expected to contribute based off of your finances. And there are two different ways that schools figure that out. There's two different methodologies. There is the federal methodology and the institutional methodology. The federal methodology is used by the FAFSA, and that is the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. That you probably are very aware of. The institutional methodology is what is being used by the CSS Profile, which is run by the College Board. The CSS Profile considers more sources of income and assets than the FAFSA or the federal methodology does. So depending on what methodology your school is using, you may have a different expected family contribution. So for example, the CSS Profile, the institutional methodology will take into account home equity or income from a non-custodial parent, like a you know divorced parent that's not really living with you, or maybe any expected summer earnings that your student has from a summer job. Those are all things that the institutional methodology takes into account that the federal methodology and the FAFSA does not. For that reason, usually if a school <laughs> uses the CSS profile, your expected family contribution is probably gonna be a little higher than if a school just takes the FAFSA because they have been simplifying the FAFSA and it's fantastic. And uh, generally speaking, they just ask a lot less questions. Now, the last term I wanna define is Pell Grant. And you'll hear people say that they're Pell Grant eligible. What does that mean? A Pell Grant is a federal grant. It's not a grant from the school, it's a grant from the federal government based on your family's income because your family has a lot of demonstrated financial needs. So if you are a Pell Grant eligible student, that means that your family actually does have a lot of financial need as recognized by the federal government. Okay, so I just threw out a lot of terms at you and you're probably like, oh my God, what do I do with all these terms? I am more confused than I started. That's okay, I'm gonna break it down and I'm gonna show you how to use all of these terms. So what is the second step that I said? I want you to estimate your family's contribution. And as I mentioned, whether you're doing the institutional methodology or the federal methodology, that's the CSS profile or the FAFSA, you might get two different numbers, but it's important that you have both. It's important that you know what schools are thinking your family can pay, because listen, in your head, you may be like, well, uh, we can pay like $5,000 a year. And then the estimated family contribution might be like, y'all can pay $20,000 a year. And you might be like, but where? But you just want to be aware that that's what that says. Because if you don't know what the expected family contribution is, if you haven't started looking, you know, at the FAFSA forecaster or College Board Big Future or College Board's EFC calculator, where they have some of these tools where you can start to see what your expected family contribution is, you are going into this process a little bit blind. So even if you don't agree, it's really good for you to know, okay, uh, schools think that we can pay this, so let's just make our budget so that we actually have this. And that's when, again, talking to, you know, college uh, financial planner comes in handy because then they can see what your expected family contribution is and they can make sure that you're not blindsided when you get that financial aid. Because this is what I don't want. I don't want students to work really, really hard and to get into schools and be so excited and then not be able to go because they can't afford it. And that is so avoidable. It's avoidable because we can figure out what your expected family contribution is. And then from there, we can figure out what the net price of a school is going to be. And we can put schools on the list that you can afford. I don't think it's good enough that schools are a good academic, social, emotional fit. They also have to be a good financial fit because I don't want students and families going into unnecessary debt for college. I think there are so many ways that we can mitigate that so that you can be set up financially for success when you graduate. Okay, so how do we start to know what schools to put on the list, Sydney? I've got you. So if your expected family contribution is high, let's say they think that you're going to be able to afford $50,000 a year, whether or not you agree with them or not, let's just say that you've done both the institutional methodology and the federal methodology. You've gone on the FAFSA forecaster and you've gone on the College Board Big Pictures tools or their EFC calculator and you have both numbers and your expected family contribution is high. Do not panic. Do not panic. That just means that you need to be putting schools on the list that have high merit aid. You want schools that are focused on giving top dollars to high performing students because schools that focus on giving merit aid are usually actually not schools that give a ton of need-based aid because they've used their institutional dollars to attract top students. So 
as long as your student is doing what they need to do and uh, you know there are schools where every type of student can get merit aid right not every student is going to be super competitive for all of the merit aid scholarships but you know there are a lot of merit aid scholarships there we make a scholarship chart with our students there's a lot of ways that you can be looking for merit aid but if your expected family contribution is high, you need to be putting schools on the list that give a lot of merit aid. I'm putting a link down below of a resource that will help you see how much merit aid certain schools give and also what percentage of need certain schools meet. We're gonna get to that in a second. So just bear with me, if your expected family contribution is high, that means you need to be looking for schools that give a lot of merit aid and not schools that focus on need-based aid because you're probably not gonna get very much. But you might get a ton of merit aid. Now, if your expected family contribution is low, let's say you, know, you hear people talk about EFC zero. That means that you are probably Pell Grant eligible, you're probably getting that grant from the federal government, and honestly, your family probably can't afford college. That does not mean that you're gonna go for free. It just means that your expected family contribution is zero. What do you need to do then? You need to be looking for schools that meet demonstrated need. Why? Because what I told you is demonstrated need is that total cost of attendance minus your expected family contribution. So if the total cost of attendance of a school is $70,000 and your EFC is zero, then you need $70,000. Hey, that's math we can all do, right? Um, but that doesn't mean that at every school you're going to get $70,000, right? you don't actually want to be looking for schools that focus on merit scholarships and this is a counterintuitive fact for a lot of people if you are very financially needy schools that give a ton of merit aid are not likely to give you that merit aid because they try to give merit aid to entice full pay students students who are already probably going to be paying most of their tuition. They're trying to give them a little bit of a discount to still get most of their tuition dollars. That is where the merit aid is going. Honestly, if you are an EFC zero student and it's a school that primarily gives merit aid, they might not have a lot of need aid dollars for you. Instead, what you want to be doing is looking for schools that prioritize need-based aid. You want to look for schools that meet close to 100% of demonstrated need. Again, check the link below for the chart that lays out the percentages of demonstrated need. Shout out to Jenny Kent and my mentor, Jeff Levy. Every year they create these tables and every year they are such an invaluable tool to honestly, probably millions of students. So if you check the charts below, you will actually see links to both an Excel and a PDF version of schools and what percentage of demonstrated need that they meet. So if they meet 100% of demonstrated need, the school costs $70,000, you have a zero EFC, your demonstrated need is $70,000, the school meets 100% of need, you are getting $70,000, everyone is happy. But what happens if a school does not meet 100% of demonstrated need? Well, let me give you kind of more realistic example. You're really excited about Sunnyside University and they cost $70,000. Now your expected family contribution is $15,000, which means that your demonstrated need, which is the total cost minus your expected family contribution is $55,000, right? School costs $70,000. You should have $15,000 according to your expected family contribution. And now this demonstrated need is $55,000. But wait, Sunnyside University only meets 70% of demonstrated need. So your demonstrated need is 55,000. They only meet 70% of it, which means that they're only gonna give you 38,500. What does that mean? That means that actually Sunnyside University is gonna cost your family 31,500. 31,500 is the net price of Sunnyside University for your family. They will give you a certain amount in grant aid, but then the rest of it is up to you. So even though your expected family contribution is only 15,000, you can see how at some schools that doesn't mean that that's all you're gonna pay. 
at Sunnyside University, you would still pay $31,500. And at that point, you'd have to figure out if that's something that your family can afford, if you feel comfortable taking out loans, or if you have any outside scholarships to help. Now, there are some schools where outside scholarships will actually reduce the grant aid that the school gives first. So you want to be very careful in reading those fine lines and understanding how each school's financial aid works. You can see how if you were expecting to pay $15,000 and you realize that it's $31,500, that could be kind of a shock. This is why I have my students know and find out the net price, that actual cost, you know, the expected family contribution, that actual cost so that they are not blindsided. Now, of course, there's still just estimates. It's not a guarantee that this is what financial aid letters are gonna look like, but if you understand exactly kind of the ballpark of the net price that you're working with because you know what percentage of demonstrated need the schools meet if you're looking for need-based aid or you can kind of see what the merit-based aid uh, scholarship requirements and qualifications are then you can start to understand if there are schools on your list that your family is just never going to be able to afford and if there are schools on your list that your family surprisingly might be able to afford and that is why it's so important that we have these conversations early before applications are sent out before decision letters are received, before we have unhappy teens. I am in the business of creating happy teenagers and also happy parents. So I like to make sure that we have found all this information out beforehand so that we can avoid and mitigate any troubles. Now, I know that this was a lot of information and some of you are not auditory processors. So I actually have a blog on my website, smontgomeryconsulting.com slash blog. I have a blog that breaks all of this down so you can read it. Um, if that's how you learn, I believe in teaching people in different modalities. But I hope this video was helpful to you. I am so excited for your teen's future and also so excited for your family's financial future and happy to help you make good financial decisions. We'll be doing more of these financial aid videos. If this was helpful, make sure that you share this video with a friend, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And of course, if you want to learn how you can work with me, just check out my website. We would love to help your teen on their educational journey.